Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is video number 113 of Small Engines Questions and Answers. A lot of you guys have been asking if we got snow here in this part of Canada. Well, we did get a little bit. This is about all we have. I'm filming this a little bit earlier in the week, so maybe by Friday today we're going to have a bit more. And I also want to welcome all my new subscribers. And if you're a new viewer today, my channel is all about small engine repair, so go check it out and make sure to subscribe because you'll end up saving yourself a lot of money. In my first question today, I had a friend of mine call me this morning in regards to his chainsaw. It's a Husqvarna 41. He hasn't used it for about two years and he also had a brand new carb kit put in around that time. Now when he goes to use it, it starts up, but it only runs for a little while and he was wondering what could be causing that problem. Well, there's a number of issues that could be causing that problem, but I'm gonna show you guys the easiest things that you can do before you take the saw apart. Now his saw would be similar to this one. This is a 45, his is a 41. I have a carburetor here, which is not the identical carb that's in that chainsaw, but it's gonna be the same principle as I'm gonna show you today here. Sometimes when a saw has been sitting for a few years, all you have to do is readjust the carburetor to get it going good again. Sometimes all you have to do is turn out the L and the H screw approximately one eighth to a quarter of a turn out and this will allow more fuel to get to the engine and may solve that non-accelerating problem. Now take note that you don't want to turn out the screws too much because then your chainsaw will be running way too rich. But if you do turn them out then you can always turn them back in slowly until you get a happy medium. Now if that doesn't do the trick, you may have to take the carb apart, even though in my friend's saw it was replaced two years ago, the carb kit, it may not necessarily mean that it's still good. With today's fuel, it does have a tendency to wreck your carburetor kits a lot faster than it did years past. You could also check the fuel lines to make sure they're connected on tight on the carburetor connectors. For example, this is a connector here, you want the fuel line to be tight on there. You also want to make sure that there's no cracks or holes in the fuel line or in the impulse hose going from the block to the carburetor. Not every chainsaw has an impulse hose but check your model to see if it does have one. Also if it has an intake boot you want to make sure it's not cracked. But most of the time it ends up being a carburetor adjustment or a new carburetor kit is in need. Now my next question, I'm going to ask you guys if you know where I can get an oil cap for this Pioneer Partner Chainsaw Model 500. This is one of my personal saws that I bought at a yard sale. I fixed it up and it works really good. It's got a lot of power, so I'd like to keep it running, although some of the parts are really hard to get for it. And the other day my oil cap cracked over here, so it doesn't leak totally yet. But if I tighten it up, you can see where the crack is. If anybody knows where I can get a used one or even a new one would be better, please let me know. Thank you. A little while ago I made a video called what it looks like inside a lawn tractor blade spindle. And I got a lot of questions in regards to this, but one question that stood out is somebody's asking me if they can drill a hole, tap it, and put a grease fitting. Well, the answer to that is yes, you can do it if you want. However, the bearings are sealed. As you can see here, there's the bearing and the other bearings at the top in there. So if you do make a hole, put a grease fitting, it's only going to fill the inside full of grease. Now some of the advantages to that could be that it's going to prevent moisture from getting on the bearings and there could be other benefits as well. So you don't have to do this, but if you want to, you can. In my next question, a YouTuber asked me what's a good way to get the rust off of an ignition module. A good way is if you have a bench grinder with a soft wire brush. It works good to get the rust off. As you can see the difference over here, there's the rusty one. So it sure looks good now. If you don't have a bench grinder like that, you can buy a little wire brush to put at the end of your drill. That works good too. Make sure to always wear safety glasses when you do this though. And if you have neither of these tools, you can always use a piece of 120 grit emery sandpaper. I usually use the wire brush because it does a really good job and they always come out clean. And I prefer using the wire brush over using chemicals to do this. And my next question a YouTuber is asking me why he hears a squeaking noise when he turns the impeller on his snowblower. Now obviously the snowblower is not running when he's doing this. So what I'm going to do here is show you an example on a snowblower that I have here in the shop. Now I've disconnected the spark plug for safety reasons before showing you this. 
And this is the impeller right at the back there and when you turn that it makes the augers turn. So his concern is when he turns it like this when it's stopped, he hears a squeaking noise. So I'm going to turn it now and you're going to hear that noise. Well, what that noise is, is like a brake system that goes around the pulley to make them stop quicker when you release the auger lever. So it's totally normal that you hear this noise when it stopped like this and you turn it. So here's an auger system from a blower and what you hear is this part over here rubbing on the pulley. As you can see, when the belts are not engaged, this brake system goes back on the pulleys to stop it. So basically, it's like a safety system. It helps the augers to stop turning quicker. My next question today is in regards to starters. And a YouTuber asked me, is it normal if you see a black rubbery powder near the gear of your starter, does that mean that your starter is garbage? Well, the answer to that is no. If your starter still works, it's not garbage. Don't worry about the powder. The black powder is from the rubber that is attached to the gear. Sometimes it wears out over time and just piles up there. Here's a Tecumseh snowblower engine. There's the starter. There's a rubber cap here. Usually this part here does not get worn out, but usually the rubber that's attached to the gear underneath does. And here's a better view of another one. As you can see, the part here is rubber. So when you use the starter, this part where my thumb is, right near the starter, comes up, makes the gear turn, the rubber does grab to that part underneath, and like I said, over time it does wear out. You may see a bit of rubbery powder all around. If your starter works, like I said, don't worry about it. Don't spray any liquids there because it may make the rubber slip on the metal part underneath. However, if your starter does not work and the rubber is all chewed up, then sometimes you can replace just the gear. On this starter here, you can replace just the gear. Now depending on the equipment, sometimes you have to buy a whole new starter. So save your money. Don't replace the starter or the gear until it doesn't work anymore. If you rely on your equipment a lot, then you may want to replace it as a preventive maintenance. Another question I often get is, are these two chainsaws similar when it comes to replacing the parts? Well, the answer to that is yes. This one here is a Homelite Super 2. And this one here is a Homelight LX30. They're basically the same chainsaws except for a few subtle changes. But when it comes to taking the carburetor off, it's the same thing. Same carb kit. Some of the carburetors are a bit different. Some have two adjusting screws. Some only have one. And some have points and some don't. I do have a video in the works to replace the carburetor kit in this chainsaw here because it's very hard to start. I even turned out the L and H screw just a little bit and it's still hard to start if it's been sitting for a few days. So hopefully this winter you're going to see a video on how to do a carburetor rebuild on this chainsaw here. So if you have a Super 2 or this one, it's going to be the same procedure to do that. So I want to thank you guys for taking time to come watch my video today. Have a great weekend and I'll see you in two weeks.